Let's go. another Tuesday and you know anytime it's Tuesday it's IOT Tuesday I'm your show you Samuel Adrani bringing you another episode exciting episode of IOT Tuesday as you know we try to mystify everything AI and IOT on this show on today's show I'm gonna be talking about the Microsoft Vision Dev Kit I unboxed it a couple of weeks ago but today we're gonna to take a look at the first start you know how to I mean everything about it getting started compare with um, some other new dev kits that's out there um, and then you know we can go have some fun but as usual before you know we get into it um, here's the intro We demystify everything AI and IoT. If you're joining us, this is the demystify. Sorry, this is IoT Tuesday. Why am I jumping ahead of the week? Yeah, this is IoT Tuesday. I'm yours truly, Samuel Adrani. I bring you every week on Tuesday IoT stuff, demystifying it, AI, how it works, you know, unboxing, trying things out, first looks, playing around, project, all that. Um, I do that. If you're having, you know, subscribe, please, please, please. Um, hit the subscribe button, go to my YouTube page, hit the subscribe button, subscribe, um, share and comment if you have any questions. Um, I try to make things very simple and easy, but hey, if you have any questions for me as well, you can drop it in the comments. I'll um, try to respond. Um, if this is your first time, thank you thanks much, so much for joining us. Uh, we're going to talk about a lot of a lot of fun stuff um, today. Um, as you always know, we have it. I just want to put a couple of things out of the way before we get started. First of it is so we resumed a couple of weeks ago i think last week and there's going to be some directions going forward on the show uh because i had a lot of comments a lot of feedbacks and requests uh, from people on the show especially trying to get into iot um so one of the focus that we'll be looking at going into next year the new season of the show will be a lot of back to basic series so we're going to talk about you know very fundamental stuff on iot component sensors architecture use cases putting them together and also trying to make it as as much as possible hands-on or project based that's going to happen you know next year so be on the lookout for it if you haven't subscribed yet please do that uh project 1000 is still you know ongoing uh i want to get as many subscribers as possible so that we can you know, we can grow the family and learn a lot of things there is um something i want to talk about today which is in respect to iot it's been around for a while but it's something that I feel, you know, we can draw lessons from and see how we can affect the different aspects of our lives. Um, it's something called Project 15. Um, and it has to do with conservation of wildlife. For, I think, some studies were done and it came out to show that in every 15 minutes, you know, an elephant is lost. And, you know, some brains and some people who are passionate about technology wanted to look at if they could do loss prevention in the retail side of things, could we do loss prevention also when it came to the wildlife, safaris, elephants, and stuff like that? So they came up with Project 15. Um, I would want to, I think there is, um, there is a reference architecture for that, but I would want to show a very, um, 
a very, I mean, very short video on Project 15. That is just to, I just want to use that to, you know, let you have some kind of understanding of what it means and the fact that the project is open source. So anyone who is interested in wildlife conservation or using it even in different ways of conserving um, life or other areas, you can apply it. Um, trying to see if uh, we have the video here. If we don't have it, I'll probably just drop the link here in chat uh, so that you can you can take a look at it. But let's let's quickly go and take a look at the the project site. I'm pasting that as part of the chat. I'll share it um, in in the show descriptions. So uh, pretty much the goal is to create a platform for for conservation, especially um, ecological sustainability solutions. So pretty much um, if you go to this. URL, the whole project is on LinkedIn, sorry, GitHub. Um, so you look at, it's it's a complete platform, all right? It's a complete platform. Let me go to that. Let's look at this. You can see the platform. So all the way from pretty much all the technologies on the side here, you know, on the left side, whether it's using drones, whether it's using um, sensors and trackers on the animals or wildlife itself, or whether you are connecting something, you know, to the ecology of the place whether i want to use you know video camera and that's the reason why i also wanted to talk about this because it plays part in some of the use cases of what we're going to do what we're going to do today you could have video feed whether you know it's an aquatic you know get all this data all right pipe them through you know the various um services or modules on the platform do some kind of you know processing analysis you can run some business logic and stuff on it take some action, notify ranges, whatever you want to, pretty much very extensive, all right? Allows you to also visualize data and then manage the devices. Now, all this has been put together into, you know, a platform that you can access and use. So if you're someone who is um, pretty much interested in, um, how do you call it, you know, conservation of the environment, the ecology, sustainability, and also interested in technology and IoT, I would encourage you to take a look at Project 15. Um, this is the open source architecture, so from your devices, it leverages a lot of Azure IoT stuff. So device provisioning, IoT hub, a lot of other Azure services that are sitting on top of it that makes it um, accessible. So if you're really interested, um, you can check it out. Um, there's, a, there's a YouTube channel, there's other, you know, um, sub, sub channels and project for it. You can also look at uh, a learning path if you want to get started to learn stuff on IoT and then jump into um, project 15 you can also use this uh let's see if this takes us to the video i'd wanted to share but this is the the youtube the github repo that has you know source code platform stuff that you can actually leverage so feel free to take a look at that um yeah i think this is yeah let, let's let's play this this video and then we'll come back We lose one elephant from the planet every 15 minutes. We will lose all elephants in 10 years. It is that statistic that pushed me into action. 15 minutes. issues we're having around preservation, nature, and what I've learned is that scientists need help and they're running out of time. Project 15 is about building this bridge between the scientific community and the technical community so they can learn what tools we can bring to the table. The Serengeti is one of the largest parks in Africa at 17,000 square kilometers, yet the Serengeti only has 150 guards. Imagine trying to protect the state of Maryland with 150 rangers, it's impossible. We started on Trail Guard about four years ago. It's a sensor put out in the field that can detect poachers and stop them before they kill. The first ones were successful. The problem was that our camera system sent every image and that drained the battery really fast. By listening to him, I learned that a solution that I had designed applied, and that was a safety platform called Project Edison. His camera sent events. It was the same as anything we did in a city, and that was my aha moment. Sarah talks about the idea, and I said, I know how to do it. 
we started drawing boundaries and where we could put devices and how that could all be brought up to the cloud for better notification of rangers. We built Azure as a hyperscale cloud services platform. We're able to provide machine learning, analytics, or reporting all over the world. Microsoft is really advancing these deep neural network models that are able to identify any species that is of concern to conservation. We have a truly hybrid platform. I can run the same services that I have in the cloud down at the edge. Microsoft's been dedicated to environmental sustainability for a long time. We have this culture that says, if you can invent a technology solution to that problem, you should do that. Project 15 can really have a bigger impact with something I already know. There's a breadth of challenges that need to be solved. There's connectivity, networking, there's devices to be built. One idea is to use the drone and the AI, and with this you know, solar cells, we can cover big parks in Africa with the self-charging drones. These are the kind of ideas. There's animal preservation, climate research, water purification. We are looking for contribution from people with different technologies, skills, experience. Everybody can contribute. Whatever you are interested in, take 15 minutes just to think about it. How can the solutions you're developing be reimagined in the pursuit of solving some of the world's most critical challenges? Join Project 15 and bring your ideas to the table. Please join us. Join us. Join us. Please join us. So that was a little video from Project um, 15. Uh, like they said, you're calling on us to join them. If you have any, you know, desire or inspiration or idea to help, you know, save, uh, you know, the wildlife or ecology or the, you know, the, the, the environment, join Project 15. And if you look, if you're watching and listening and paying attention, you know, you talked about the fact that they had setting challenges. And then they had to look at how to apply some of, you know, already built solutions um, in other areas, you know, to Project 15. Uh, one of the examples that was, was the fact that their camera kept, you know, almost always taking videos, sending sending all the videos, right? So the, the, camera, the camera battery was pretty much draining so fast. Um, so these are things we'll be talking about with respect to today's episode because we're going to be talking about some, you know, cameras or visual um, AI stuff and also the fact that this has evolved technology has evolved from when last the video was made uh, to now where there are things you can process on the edge you can do some of these analysis right on the edge than sending it to the cloud or you have regions where there's limited connectivity so pretty much just there's a lot of interest in that space um, let me know in the comment if you really are interested in project 15 uh, I'll try to get Sarah on one of these days so we can talk about project 15 more and then how we can participate but uh, before then um, i share the resource already you can go to the github repo look at the resources they have you know and then um pretty much you know join and take a look at it now if you're just joining us we're still on iot tuesday we just started where we've been talking about some honorable mentions i wanted to talk about and that's project 15. um today's episode we're talking about the microsoft uh, vision development kit um, I have it here. I'll be going to the the bench in a few minutes. So yeah, bear with me. Well, before we get into it, a couple of things we would be looking at. We'll be talking about stuff like IoT Edge. There'll be some containers. There'll be some cognitive services. We're gonna be talking about a lot of things, all right? But 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 don't get too much ahead of yourself. Before we get started. Let's go to the bench so I make some clarifications on the various hardwares and the tools, and then we'll come back and we can get started. In the meantime, if you have any questions, please drop it in and I'll try to answer that. Let's get to the bench. So what we have, what we have on the bench is we have the Azure Perceptive Dev Kit, all right, here. Um, this is the brain or the box uh, here. Is a camera module I cannot I think I can even flip it this way for you to see yeah this is a camera module it's magnetized so you can detach and put it you can actually add a second um, a second uh, camera if you wanted to 
um, this is the, the 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 microphone array or audio module so you can do things like uh, voice um, commands voice recognition and stuff like that and then this is the um, this is the brain box running some version of Linux right now this is more recent now this is the Azure percept uh, percept dev kit all right this one now it's a dev kit this is not percept itself so there was some kind of a I would say confusion but kind of like not clarity amongst people in the community as to what the Azure percept dev kit was and a lot of people thought this whole thing was a now this is a dev kit but the people thought this was the percept itself however that was clarified actually the the modules that are running or the module running on the brain box that is Azure percept and there's work to bring that module onto uh, Azure stack and other you know local deployment so you don't necessarily need to have this same hardware to run percept right you can get the percept module run it on things like the nvidia jetson nano or other compatible hardware and then you can use pretty much any camera any micro microphone array and then you should be fine you will be fine to do that just that there's a dev kit that will allow you to get started you know and writing your modules ai modules and stuff like that to run on it so let's get that clear but we are going to come we're going to have a whole series on this we we unbox this uh, on the show couple of like i think a couple of months ago we we started setting it up we haven't done anything um in depth with it so we'll come back to this uh once we're done with the series for this one um i want to talk about this 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 here the vishing you know um dev kit you know the microsoft vision dev kit or ai vishing ai dev kit vishing ai this is much older than the azure percept you know that has all these things this is a much older um much older kit this is a newer one now you want to say that let's let's put it in context all right this here this old one is um is actually hold on just a sec let's see why and if you're joining us a warm welcome thank you for joining if you have any questions kindly put them in the chat whether you're watching from facebook from youtube from twitter welcome so to put things in um you know perspective so you understand you know what's happening if you look at Azure, you know percept dev kit right that's made up of the the brains and then the you know the microphone array and then the or audio audio kit and then the video side comparing that all right to uh let's put it this way comparing that to this which is an older module it's more or less like this okay let's see if i can i always be <laughs> talking you know just let's put it this way so let's take the the audio module let's put the audio module aside all right somewhere there so this the ai vision dev kit this one is equivalent to this what you're seeing here the vision the camera module and the brain you know and all that all put together in this box in this one single edge here device so that's the difference this allows you to expand you know put some other io stuff on it you know pretty much they all work with the same concept so i would show you some um, illustrations on how it works pretty much you're packaging AI modules using Azure machine learning and stuff uh, Onyx cafe tensorflow edge impulse whatever deploying it to containers and then you deploy it on these edge devices is the same scenario the concepts are the same all right but today the percept is not our focus so let's take it let's put it in the back <laughs> background and then focus on this now in terms in the uh, in the unboxing um where's that yeah, pretty much this is just it you know it came with this it's just this like the, the kit in the box and then a usb cable now it's bendable and the the bottom part here has some magnets so you can either um mount it with this uh plugs or it's magnetized so i can actually put it like if it's um I can just stick it anywhere some in any any place where I can get it magnetized and then you can see that it's quite you know I can tilt it to different you know to different angles 
which is cool because assuming I, I can mount this on the wall this way, right? Like I can mount it on the wall this way, tilt it. I can put it in different positions and angles. So that's one of the cool things um, about it. Now, let's take a look at the specs. Um, so I've gone to now this this kit um, was actually it is powered by Qualcomm, right? So it's running um, a lot of Qualcomm stuff, but then it's in partnership with um, Microsoft Azure, specifically the Azure IoT stuff. So um, they are saying it's a starter kit for AI, you know, AI, AI, vision AI, AI development and stuff. So pretty much has your camera. And here's the case. Most of the things you're going to do here on the dev kit will apply to if you wanted to use your Jetson Nano Raspberry Pi camera or using any um, any strong or any you know good spec uh, base, and then you're going to run like deploy your your AI modules on it. It's going to function the same thing. But just bear with me here. Just stick stay with me on this one. So um, so one would say let's let's look at the specs first, and then we can we can take a look at some use cases, some technologies, and stuff in there. So um, in terms of course, I think it's around three hundred. 300 plus dollars so that's just you know in there all right so let's take a look at uh, let's go to the the site get some spec so this is the azure a iot starter kit for you know vision ai you know so you can run ai modules on the edge so this you can say is an edge computing device simply put you can run all the mo deploy all your modules on the edge and deliver you. you don't have to make you know calls to the internet or the cloud to have it you know process it you can process all the stuff on the edge all right uh yeah so like you can see i'll flip to it i'll flip to the back i think we can do this right if we flip to the back actually let's just look at the back before we come to them so let me bring it a bit closer here so as you can see you can see the USB Type C. You can see the HDMI. So you can connect to it and see some, you know, output as well. And then there is the audio, um, audio jacks for any audio specific things you want to do with it. So pretty much. And then on the side here, it has um, an SD card slot. So you can also put an SD card um, in there. All right? Yeah. Don't flip it this way. Yeah, so, so pretty much, uh, let's look at that. So let's take a look at, um, let's take a look at the um, what it's made up of. Like I mentioned, it's Qualcomm uh, in conjunction with IoT. So inside the kit, the Microsoft Azure IoT Edge runtime, and then also the Qualcomm uh, Neural Processing SDK for AI, it's all in it, you know, pre-deployed. It's running a version of Linux. Uh, which is a Yocto Linux. So it's a Linux based edge device. Um, as you can see, so the main board, the Vision AI dev kit, as you can see here, running Yocto Linux. Um, you know, yeah, so I get on. So uh, the SOC module is a Qualcomm uh, QC S603. Um, I think it's just, um, I, you know, one of the modules or something. So Wi Fi, Bluetooth connectivity, it has Bluetooth low energy right camera 8 megapixels 4k ultra high you know it can so 8 megapixels pictures and can pictures and can take 4k ultra high definition videos uh memories uh 16 gig emmc um yeah ddr4 gig it has a speaker and a mic so you can see it has a it has a line in line out and then four mic array and then a speaker all right so pretty much just like I was saying, putting is like putting everything you're seeing in the percept separately all put together in one in one package. All right. Um, rechargeable batteries, it can be powered over internet, USB type C. We saw that at the back. Um, also has a storage um, LED. Sorry, SD slot. Uh, the three LEDs are actually in front. So when it lights up, you can see it and has an HDMI A. Uh, so uh, I thought I had this. I'm not sure if it's here but again quickly um i just want to play this quick video that's going to give you like going to give us a, a quick overview of some of the use cases you know in terms of um security and workplace safety um all that so i'm going to play this quick video that'll give us some idea of you know 
what this whole thing can be. So let's let's do this. I and, and sorry, I think hold on. Let's see. I thought I had this. Let's see if I Illusions. can get the um, already recorded one because else is going to affect the stream. Uh, okay, I keep my fingers crossed to see if this is going to play. IoT solutions use cloud-based services to collect and organize data, execute advanced workloads like deep learning AI algorithms, and provide centralized operations and management. Today, IP cameras are used across many industries. Traffic monitoring, security, manufacturing, and industrial safety are examples of IoT applications using IP cameras. These devices capture huge amounts of video and images that are sent to the cloud for processing. An IoT solution must help ensure connectivity, speed, power, and security for these devices. Combined with the need to collect, store, and process large amounts of data in the cloud, these solutions are complex to integrate and expensive to manage. Microsoft and Qualcomm are disrupting this space with the software on silicon, which enables a new breed of IP camera. Powered by the Qualcomm Vision Intelligence platform, the device is capable of AI processing locally on the device, analyzing what's seen, and sending only the relevant data to the cloud for insights and action. This IP camera is an Azure IoT starter kit that uses the Azure Machine Learning Service to build, train, and deploy AI models. These models are packaged into containers and executed on the camera using Azure IoT Edge. This device is a reference device for developers to build their own IoT solutions. All the AI computation is done on the camera using the built-in neural processing engine for hardware acceleration of the deep neural network models. Only the results are sent to the cloud, so all your sensitive data stays safely on the device. You can start building your own model with Microsoft's custom Vision AI service, or bring your own TensorFlow, Cafe, or Onyx model and package it using Azure Machine Learning. Or you can pick an existing model from the Azure AI gallery to easily create your own Vision AI solution. Join the VisionAIDevKit.com community and partner with Microsoft and Qualcomm to help build your AI solution. Go to VisionAIDevKit.com to learn more and start building your Vision AI IoT solution today. Yep, so there you have it. That was just a quick video to, you know, pretty much take us through everything that the kit stands for. So, like I mentioned, traffic monitoring, security manufacturing, industry, uh, safety, all these things can be done. And one of the things that stand out is the fact that you can do a lot of processing on the edge with the device. So you don't necessarily have to be, you know, throwing, sending in real time all the video footages into the cloud, but pretty much you can put all that. And the cool thing is because the modules, um, the modules are all on the, on the camera, you can decide to send which event is important to the cloud for actions. All right. So if let's say you're monitoring, um, some, let's say if you're, if you're using it for traffic monitoring, and you have your um, uh, vision or object detection or even running some kind of um, um, OCR recognition on the vision, on the, on the images that are taking, you can then send specifics. So I'll give you an example. Let's say that this was part of a traffic management solution as a smart camera and the police were on the lookout for, let's say, a red BMW with, you know, registration number of a setting thing, right? Now, with that pre-programmed or that deployed and sent to the cloud, sent, sorry, sent to the edge on this device, what's going to happen is that this device can now be processing this locally and not necessarily be sending every image it takes to the cloud to process that. It can process that image locally on this camera, and when it sees or picks any car that matches the description, the, more, the make, the model, and the number, then it can now make a call to the internet, hey, there's an act, I need you to perform this action. I have spotted this, the particular car in this area, whatever information that is, it can send that. So that's kind of like one pretty uh, good use case. And also mentioned the fact that it supports, you know, the Microsoft AI services, supports uh, TensorFlow, Onyx, Cafe, OpenVINO, like, and as at the time that was that video was made, some of these things, like for instance, Edge Impulse, you can also do some Edge Impulse deployment, containerize it and ship it onto this thing. So you can bring your own module or look at the existing modules, like like they said, the Microsoft AI Gallery, all right? You can look at that if you wanted to. But for today's session, 
we're going to look at how to get started with this i'll try to connect it um i think we should be able to get a video feed from this to you because we have our elgato game capture here so i'll just connect it to the hdmi and then we can see how that works but before then again here if you want if you have any questions uh feel free to drop them in the comments i will see and respond to them live or you know reply to it later on after the show is done don't forget that the show is always available on demand after the stream to watch a lot of people think that because it's a live stream they miss it that's a no 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 it also goes back on youtube on demand i think up, uh, in less than an hour after the show it's it's on you know youtube that you can actually go take a look at so don't forget to uh go check that out so um we were required to go to the url which is the um, azure dev kit let me go there right now so that we can actually start you know um using it so yeah so let's go ahead and that should take us to i'm going to copy that url paste it here in the chat I also add it to the show notes so when we go to that link this is what we have so it takes us a smart camera for the intelligent edge um yeah it went out of stock for a while but pretty much is back in there so um we can decide to look at getting fat like getting up and running minutes we can also look at how to build the new vision ml so and again like i mentioned it's it's applicable or it works well with the uh, azure custom vision services um we can also use Jupyter notebooks which are studio code pretty much compatible with it so let me open the vision services here uh so as you can see start build deploy and then you know run stuff so let's see uh i also open this and this on the side we've talked about the technical you know part of it already running BLE and Wi-Fi as you can see we've seen this already so we're pretty much on that all right so let's get started so let's go ahead and get up and running in minutes and also you can check um, the IOT show or channel line Olivier's show has a lot of stuff as well on it uh, pretty much unboxing bringing in experts who are working on it we're just going to do um, we're going to get started with it. I will run, I think, probably three, two or three more ep like um, episodes on this. Um, and then we would, you know, we'll transition probably to the Percept. So this question from Maxwell, so Percept is what is running on the dev kit. So no. So like I mentioned, um, this this one is, um, is an older one. I think, where is that? I should be able to... Don't worry, I, I, I was just trying to see if I can put the, the comment on, but if I do that, that's going to um, show all the other stuff up there, but that's fine. Don't worry. Um, I'll, I'll set that up in a, so I can bring your comments in there. So this is all running Percept, all right? But that's a good question. Percept, yes, Percept is also open source. Percept is also open source. So this is running, this is running stuff from... Qualcomm and Microsoft. This, this has its own thing running. But the question would be, I think that's a good one. If you, if we were to hack this, all right, if we were to hack this right now, would we be able to run Percept on this? That is a good question. I think I should, hmm, that's, that's a very challenging question. Maybe we should put ourselves to the test. Well, let's get set up. Let's run it and see. And maybe, well, what after all was the show about trying to do some of these things i would try to see if we can actually run percept on this that would be a cool challenge anyways like but like i said it's just a dev kit you know pretty much you need a base module that's you need a camera microphone stuff like that so if you don't have a dev kit like this you can put a couple of things together like get um you should even be able to run it on a raspberry pi 8 gig you know um some camera and stuff like that or the nvidia jetson nano so pretty much you just need a decent machine that can because now you can even run edge impulse tensorflow light stuff modules on even low like low footprint uh devices so we should see that how that works so let's go to let's get started with this where did that take us interesting so I hope that um, Maxwell that answered your question. 
yes 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 so let's see uh yeah so we're here we did have been the same thing so i was like let's get started there you go yeah so we open this twice all right so let's get started here yep and yes someone was asking <laughs> When am I doing a, a live stream on, on TikTok? Okay, so the, the this is the dynamics, okay? The aspect ratio 16 by 9 of what we do for, for web and video, all right, is um, it's a, it's a different aspect ratio for phone. So what's going to happen is that if I want to do a multi, like um, a simu, uh, what's the name? Um, a simu stream or you know, simultaneous stream for both, let's say, web and phone form factor i would have to set up let's say i'd have to set up my um a different rig or have to set up a different like camera system for just to show that aspect ratio right i'm going to figure that or maybe it could be that there's a service already somewhere that would take my feed snap it into you know the phone form factor and send it but then you'll be you'll be missing a couple of things unless of course i specifically do it that way and you know put things but that's that's that is a good call uh, we will we will we'll, we'll think about that if that's the case. All right, all right. So, as just quick starting start the machine learning journey. Let's see, learn about the initial. So, a um, couple of things. It's asking us quick start. Where is the quick start? Let's open the quick start. Let's open the quick start. Okay, so this is the quick start. Uh, let me see if you can. Let's zoom this in so we can probably see it better for the sake of others that might not be seeing this well uh so this guide here and let's see maybe i should start using my green screen so i can just cut myself out from the funnel so uh connect your laptop to the camera connect the camera to the internet create a needed azure services for existing ones deploy a default vision sample module see a video output from the camera showing a recognized object pretty much that's it so the step the step you know the getting started says so like I said, we're going to have two more parts or three more parts to the um, vision dev kit. So today is just the first of it. We'll do the next episode. We'll do that. So we're going to follow through this way. If we don't finish in today's episode, don't worry. We'll come back to it. Um, well, Blade, I'm finding it very lazy to write an article to come, but I really want to do this and just you know put some highlights on the on the blog post. So stick with me. So connect it to the laptop. Connect it to the internet. Create the needed Azure service. That's the thing. You will need access to an Azure account, right? If you don't have an Azure account, trust me, it's free to get. You, you don't. If you if you're really going to do a lot of dev testing, you can get a free account. And yeah, you might need a credit card. But if you're a student, you can use a student. There's a there's one for student. But trust me, you know you will not be billed. All right. So you would have access to almost all the Azure services. Use them so far as you are within the free tier. You can use all the services forever. If you want me to do um a sh like a, a stream on that, let me know. I can do it. So let's follow the trend, follow the trend, follow the trend. So connect the Vision AI kit camera to Wi-Fi, create an SRI Azure resources, resource group, IoT hub. I already have an IoT hub, so we we'll probably will just leverage that. And then we'll do something like the um, uh, IoT edge. So yeah, I, I think I have a connect the Vision uh, AI dev kit to the created edge device, see video output. Yeah, so we'll do. So like I said, you need an Azure account. We already have that. Vision dev kit camera checked. Monitor to su support HDMI input with HDMI. So wait, monitor supporting HDMI input with an HDMI cable. Do not use any cable adapters or RTSP supporting. So we have that. So um, like I mentioned, let's quickly go back to the bench. So this is the cable that came with it, USB Type C. Uh, if we if we you know bend it over as the appropriate word, we can connect it here. Oh, Sam, get your mind out of the gutters, guys. I just said appropriate. So, um, so this here would be connected to the computer. I already have. Um, let's see. I hope this will not freak the stream out. Let's see. Yep. So this is all we have. And then, um, hold on, hold on. We have our, I think this is already connected. So here I have the, I have a, a 
capture card, which will send the feed from, we can get the feed from, from how do you call it? We can get the feed from the, from the, from the, the camera, all right, to, yes, there you go. Let's expand this. So here, a bit of a connectivity, a bit of connection going on. So there we go. This should look interesting. So this is an output. Okay. So there you go. Awesome. So let's put this here first. So now I've got my HDMI, all right, which is going to my uh, Elgato capture card. So whatever it is coming out from here, we can see that. So let's connect. Look at this. That feels hard, man. It feels, you know, very... Okay, there you go. I think I like the way that sounded and felt, so. Okay, so that is connected and then connecting it to the laptop. So I'm going to just turn it this way, flip it this way so we can see this. Uh, maybe, maybe let me turn it this way so you can look at me from this side. So now this is going to connect to my laptop. So let's do that. Connect, connect, connect. There we go. It's connected. Okay, let's look at look 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 at that. Look at that. Look at that. As soon as I connected it, the lights came on. So now um, let's see if I switch here. Uh no signal. Nothing is coming yet. Uh, okay, let's come back to the bench. Let's come back to the bench. So, I don't know. I mean, this right here, this here would have just um, shown if the, how do you call it? Let's, let me just deactivate it for a sec. And reactivate it again. I think something should come up. I mean, if not, if not anything at all. Yeah, yeah. I, th I think it's working. I, th I think. It's... Yes, it is. Because I can actually, so I can actually hear myself because um sorry about that i can actually hear myself because the microphone is working so it's looping and coming in as a feed right so uh let's try this yeah yeah as soon as i switch the way i can hear myself so which means it's, it's running we just need to probably deploy something when it to see that the output so great one step down so we've connected it to the to the computer We've connected the monitor to it to see what's happening. So we need to configure it. Like I said, so you can go to this URL. Actually, let me also add it to it. Um, let me move my resources here. And then let's add it here. Let's add the resources. Yeah, and, and don't forget, like I said, feel free to ask all the questions you want to ask in the chat. I'll try to answer them. I already have an account, so set up the camera. So these steps will configure a Defi camera for Wi-Fi, connect to the camera and the edge um, and all that. So let's see. So as you can see, it says if it's blink blinking, device is ready for setup, which is happening right now. I take it to the bench you can see that it's blinking right so the red is blinking which means it's ready to be set up correct right let me do it this way so uh, so if it's all green it's connected to the Wi-Fi if it's uh, if it's just okay green blah 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 red okay yeah 
So from the PC, so this is where it's going to get tricky because it's asking that, you know, from the PC, we need to connect to a Wi-Fi network with this name, right? So let's see. That is strange. We need to connect to this. Uh, a computer's web browser. You should go to if you don't see it below. Okay. So, question is, if we did this now, we might not see the camera view. All right. So, let's do this. I I could actually try with my phone to connect my phone to the so the the Wi-Fi um, network, which is um, MSIoT dash something. So, or another thing is we could easily just connect. I could connect my my MacBook, and then we will connect the MacBook instead to it. I think we should do that. That is serve us better, considering the fact that I already have the MacBook right here with me. Yeah, so I'll just shift this here. Where is that power for the MacBook? There you go. It's good I kept a lot of the things right near me. And what's going to happen is I would, in order to show what's happening on the MacBook, I might have to disconnect um, the camera for just some few minutes and then connect it to my to my MacBook okay there we go all right so let's see if we, we can, can see this Interesting. Oh. Hold on. Let's see. Actually, actually, uh, so let's see. Let's quickly go back here. Let's change some settings. Now you're probably seeing no signal, right? We don't want to send any audios, so let's deactivate this, and then uh, we don't, yeah, so we don't need this. Yep, we don't need this from it. Uh, audio device. Ah, why? Okay. All right. Oh no. So it's just uh, audio output. We don't. We don't want. We don't want anything from the audio output. All right. So we just want. Oh God. Okay, so game capture HDS. Yes, that is it. Okay. And let's see. So that you should be able to see. Sorry if you're seeing a black screen. Sorry for that. We're just trying to get um, the the capture card to to show some you know just to show this for us hold on let's see this just a sec and then let's put this back all right okay so let's 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 go on whilst um i'm trying to get the um, the capture card to work so i'm going to go on to my macbook and then i'll try to you know, search for that network. Let's see if it finds it. Let me try this for the last time, people. Okay, we're just going back to this. So, 
uh, let's go ahead. So yeah, I've seen it. M I I've seen M S I O T. Um, apologies for for that. Um, I'm I'm still conflicted. I I feel strongly I should um be able to send you guys this feed. But any which ways, don't um my apologies. We'll we'll see how we can resolve this. But I can see it M M S I O T. I wish I could just you know what? I wish I could just show you this. Um, bah, 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 bah. I'm going to try this again. Take this out. Take this back in. And then this change the properties a bit. If you're seeing a blank screen, uh, apologies. It's not a blank screen. We're just trying to get our um, capture card to give us um, an output for you know okay let's see okay okay all right all right anyway let's be mindful of a time all right so I'm going to connect to it and so the next thing it says is um, from your PC connect the Wi-Fi name is the last character mm. okay okay yes I've seen that that's true okay so where is the password where is the password the label so from the PC we've connected it yes the label of the bottom of the device would have the default ah wax it. okay that's true so let's go behind sorry guys I can show you this <laughs> yeah so the password is under it yeah, any which way so let me just go ahead and um, enter the password so I almost said it out loud. <laughs> I almost said it out loud. You know that thing where uh, I okay, there you go. Let's join. And looks like it's connecting. So it says that once the connection has happened. Okay, let's see. Yeah. So um so th this is why I really wanted to show you um, let's see let's see let's see let's see let's see let me see if I can switch to the bench I don't know if you can I don't know if you can see this well but ah man I'm so I'm I, I mean apologies I I should have you know had this running before we started the show but I promise uh, for the subsequent episodes um, for this, we wouldn't have this problem. So I'm seeing this screen, this exact screen. Uh, let me take you to the, the screen. I'm seeing this exact screen here. Let's get started. Uh, you will need an Azure um, subscription to connect your camera to Microsoft Azure. Don't, um, yeah, so pretty much I'm seeing this screen, all right? Well, I mean, well, for just the sake of today's session, I'm just going to leave it this way. And then um, I just click on next. So that's, um, I don't know if you can see this, but then it's, you know, I'm going to go through the process. It's asking me for the password. Uh, it's actually, it's asking me to set the password. Um, I think I'm okay with that. Where is that my mouse? There you go. Yeah, so ssh uh let's see what does it what 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 do we say here let's see tap next we'll open the ssh configuration screen where you can create a new wi-fi access point point phrase for the camera we don't want to we'll just keep it to the default um set a password uh okay but we don't want to that's okay uh allow allow access to the camera uh, remotely using a secured connection. I don't think they did that. They only said enable developer mode. So, yep. Yeah, pretty much they left everything the same. So, we're going to do the same thing as well. 
and click on next. Okay, developer mode, let's click on next. And then now we come to the screen, this next screen here, where it's actually asking us, you know, to connect the internet to it. So um, it's actually seen my internet connection. Um, I don't want it to use the same connection I'm using to stream, so I use a different one. Then I'll enter the password uh, for it. Let's do that. Uh, my my password is entered. Configure the Docker domain server. No, we're not doing that. Uh, the enter you see a confirmation screen. The Wi-Fi password. Blah blah blah. Yeah. So pretty much yes. And then we'll click on next. I'm not setting up any Docker configuration. So it's connecting. And just like they said, that once it's successfully connected, the three red LEDs we're seeing should change to green, all right? So you see your camera is connecting. This particular one is what I'm seeing now. Uh, so it's processing. And once it's online, it should change to say your camera is online. And then at least we would have achieved the first step of connecting our camera there you go. I see it. Um, let me switch to the bench and show you. So as you can see, you can see that it's now three blinking. Um, all the LEDs are blinking green, right? And from from what we saw from the list up here, I'll quickly go back there for you to take a look. That says that when you have the blinking green Wi-Fi connecting to is connected to the um, um, Wi-Fi connect connected to internet, but not connected to an IoT hub. All right. So this particular, so it's now connected to the internet, but it's not connected to IoT hub yet. We have an IoT hub, so we will connect to it, and then um, apparently when it's stable green, we are connected to the IoT hub. We are download. It would show that it's only the manifest or executing modules, and then if it's amber, it's offline. So pretty much, let's go to the next step, and then uh, we'll see how that works. So now that it says it's successfully connected to AfriLogic Solutions, uh, which is the the Wi-Fi I have, there's also the option to go next. Let's see what this is saying. So pretty much the same thing. Yeah, so it says your camera is online and connected to whichever. So the next phase is connected to Azure IoT. Uh, um, as an IoT Edge device. So I'm going to do next. Here we have, looks like we have only um, three, two minutes. Okay, so, so uh, yeah, I guess wanting to be mindful of time, the next step would just be because I already have an I, um, I don't think you have an Azure IoT Edge device configuration string. So, um, so next we'll guide you to create an IoT Edge device for Microsoft Azure. So pretty much, so what's going to happen is they've given me a code, all right, and I'm supposed to set up my. Um, actually, let me copy the code somewhere before I forget. So I've been giving a code, and I'll have to use that code, go to the Azure portal, all right, and then use that code to connect, all right, to um, Azure IoT Hub and to create what we call an Azure IoT Edge device, all right? So we will be looking at that in the next uh, episode, which is next week, Tuesday. Uh, today, we'll just leave it at this. Um, I might go ahead to connect that and then share that resource uh, as part of resource links in today's episode. But if this was um, insightful enough, and don't think is yeah, I know this is a boring part. I mean, obviously for everything, setting up is the boring part. We're just setting it up, you know, and then we'll start to have the fun with it. What I want you to do for me is comment, you know, send me or comment or send me a, whatever it is you can send to me. Some of the use cases you want us to build with this camera. One of the things that I want to do is I wanted to, I'll try to train it with a different um, vehicle um, emblem. So Toyota, Hyundai, Chevy, whatever. And then I'll fix it in my car and have it, I'll just drive around to see 
how many Toyotas, how many whatever brands of vehicles it's seen on the road, and then we'll send that. And I'll try to record that and share with you um, once we. But for now, we're going to set it up. Once we set it up, we're going to do a few things to learn how to deploy it to the edge. Once we get we get conversant with that, then we'll build that simple um, a car model um, 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 recognizer or detector, and then we'll we'll deploy that onto it and run it in environment if this has been interesting don't forget to please 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 smash the like button you know subscribe join the channel send your comments invite friends to like join and share until i come your way next week with another episode part two of the ai uh, vision dev kit stay safe be good learn something new and let's make the world a better place i'll catch you next week